Hey guys, it's Cliff again, and look at this office space. Today we'll talk about how to furnish it, the things to consider, and how to maximize it to its full potential. Alright, so here we have our commercial space, nice and big and empty, and we have a business owner. She runs a company that sells tea products and she wants to sell the tea products and have clients come in to drink tea and enjoy and host events in this space. So we have to make the most of this space. How should we do it? Let's go through together. So this is a nice big open space, 33 feet long, very big, very cavernous. There's one door here, one window here. That's it. Window is here. There's sliding doors dividing the space into two distinct zones. So the client, when she saw this space, she was thinking, okay, I will have my administrative space here. This is where I keep all my tea products. This is where I will pack the, the teas to be shipped out. And this area right by the door is where I will have my event space. Nice big couch, nice um, table to drink the tea and stuff like that. So... This doesn't work. Okay, you, do you understand why it doesn't work? Let me explain. So this space is structured like that. The door is here, the windows are there. This is a very, very dark zone and very busy. So you have to walk from point A to point B. Lots of movement around here. So this makes this area not so cozy, not so calm and peaceful. Not really a place you want to have calming tea, right? It feels like you're in the middle of a walkway with all the staff rushing in and out packing their stuff. And this space where it's going to be your packing area is taking up the nicest spot in the room, south facing windows, lots of natural light, a bit of a waste. Instead, this is how I would do it. I would put my tea area here and my packing area over here. Now there's a problem with this. It means that you have to walk through as an end client, you have to walk through this busy packing ugly area to get to your tea zone. So that doesn't work either. How to fix this? So here is my solution. Wait, you think about it first. Give yourself a moment and think about it. See if you can think of something better. Okay, moment's up. So let's see what we can do. Firstly, I'm going to create a bar, a nice bar, and I'll structure it, I'll, I'll place it like this. So we have the bar and the staff will stay behind. I'm going to put a whole wall of storage units over here to keep all my tea products in a nice, massive, impressive wall of shelves. Very impressive. And also the bonus, you get to hold a lot of stock. Then I have my island over here. This is where I will keep. Uh, this is where I would like do the packing and unwrapping and all those kind of stuff. You can hide a desk in the end at the end of the space. So having this bar here helps me to create a working zone and also the zone for the clients to walk from point A to point B. So it's a nice, clear, open zone. <clears throat> Okay, one more thing I would do is that I would, I would kind of soften this very um, uh, utilitarian bar by turning into a dining table at the end. So it becomes like a, almost like a presentation zone. Like this is where you pack, where you serve tea, this is where you can sit for like little drinks and stuff. And this could also be a wet bar. Finally, I am going, oh yeah, so this I will decorate my nice entry zone with nice pictures, a console, table lamps, all that kind of jazz, right? Over here, nice artwork. So we create a nice uh, entrance journey from point A to point B. Here is our nice tea zone where we will sit and drink and relax. So I have my tea table over here. Now this, okay, so this kind of, th that's it, right? But we want to make this a bit nicer. So what to do? I am going to kind of, uh, you know the sliding doors that they, they used to be here? I'm going to push the two sliding doors to end on the left and the right of the space and I'll cover them with nice rice paper. Remember, this space is rented. They don't own it. They can't remove the sliding doors. They have to keep everything as they are. So I'll ask them to stick some nice rice paper on the sliding doors to create a nice zone. And this one here, I, it, I mean it's not so cozy. Table, table, they're a bit too similar. I'm going to instead go for something a bit lower. So we have a nice floor table with some floor seating, very cute, very cozy. But there is a problem. You can't have floor seating when the floor is the same level as this. This is too busy, lots of movement and walking around. This is supposed to be calm and protected. If you want to sit by the floor, you must feel protected. So what I will do, I will raise the floor where this floor seating is going to be. I will raise the entire area with a nice platform just exactly where that sliding door starts and ends. So I have a platform and this is where I will have my things. Oops, 
my floor seating will be on the platform. So this way I'll create my ah my floor seating is flying everywhere. Okay, floor seating, floor seating, floor seating, floor seating. Very nice. Okay. Like that. And then here, I mean I could put some more like storagey stuff over here, like little bench type things to create some nice um mood lighting. Mood mood lighting. Let's have some mood lighting. So here we have our space, we have our packing zone where we store the tea over here. That's a, that's a kind of a step down from the packing where you can work. The staff can actually sit here and work on their laptops. Or when you have a big event, the whole space becomes a nice event space. And then you have your console here and we have our nice seating tea area. Let me show you how it looks in profile. So when you enter, it's like this. Very nice. You can see all the storage units there. Our bar, our office area for the staff that looks like a bar as well, a dining table. And then we have our very, very cozy tea zone at the back. See, so we created something quite nice from nothing. Let's show you a drawing of the space. Okay, so here we are drawing the perspective of the room. This is a one point perspective. It's almost two point. I tilted to a slight angle to give a little bit of bias towards the entrance. Remember the entrance view is always the most important view when you approach a space. That view must look nice. So that is how you always approach the design of a space. Stand at the main entrance, see how it looks. It has to look good from that angle. So I'm going to start with the drawing by drawing how the building looks like now, how the space looks like empty. There's the big main room, the beam that divides the room into two sections, and of course the horrible glass sliding door which we cannot remove. So the glass sliding door over here. And then there's a nice big window facing south, air conditioner, lots of great views, and of course our radiator. This room also has a few other quirks like this column over here, and of course the horrible commercial lighting that's hanging from above commercial lighting. So these lights are the kind that you don't really want to turn it on, especially if you want to turn this into a kind of a destination venue type of space. You want a bit more ambience, pipes, horrible stuff, pipes, okay? So here is how the room looks like right now with its wooden floors. What will we do? We start with the room at the back. That's where we want to have our seats. So I'm going to start with drawing a little platform. I'm just thinking. <laughs> How to draw. Oh okay, yeah, no, before that, push the two sliding doors to the left and the right to create a nice little archway, cover it with nice paper, and then I'll create my little platform. So this will create a very distinct little space, a nice cozy little room that you're further away from that front zone. And inside this little zone, I can create my seating area, round table, floor table, floor seats, nice little cushiony space at the corner, nice paper lantern, and this is our inside space. And now we design the most important, the piece de la resistance, which is the giant bookshelf, the giant shelf to hold all my tea products. Remember, this is the first view that you get. You want to be impressed somehow. When you open the door, you see this entire wall of stock. Having lots of stock shows your client that you are very, very stable. You have lots of stock, you are not afraid, you are not going to disappear one night. So having it all on show creates this kind of confidence and it also shows the variety that you have. Even if these teas might be repeated, fine, let it repeat, but at least it shows that there's a lot. You, we want to show some kind of volume. So nice repetitive shelves, lots of teas, decorations, books, everything that you kind of want to showcase the lifestyle of your product. So if it's tea, it might not just show tea, you can show like books, contemplative things. And then now I will draw my bar. This is the thing that the the staff will work on. You have a nice big table, you can work with your laptops, a nice bar that you can stand and pack. This bar creates almost like a barrier. So between where you work behind the bar and in front of it where you have all the clients walking in and forth, you create these two separate zones. Nice Japanese wishbone chairs to create an uh. So notice these dining chairs are quite important. The style of the chair that you use will really affect the style of the space. If I use Japanese looking chairs or Chinese looking chairs, you get this kind of Eastern influence. Nice paper lantern once more to really create this visual anchor in the middle of the space. And of course some nice artwork. This will kind of show the create that journey towards the tea space at the back. I am going to write some um, Chinese words. This is tea, cha. I forgot to write tea, yeah, yeah that, that thing. Cha. And <laughs> make it look like calligraphy. Yes. When you want large artwork, scrolls are a very shortcut way to get big artwork because all you need is 
a weight top and bottom and to hang up like suspend a big piece of paper next piece i think i will draw um uh yeah less yes this means leaf it should be chai it should be tea leaf not leaf tea but never mind this is me not thinking when i'm drawing so this is yeah which means leaves leaves tea and I'm, I'm so dumb i know anyway now this is how the space looks like what we want to do now is to add some lighting. So in this bookshelf, you want to create um, like backlight so to really enhance and create the vibes of the space. So I'm going to put lots of LED lights from behind. It's a little bit difficult to draw LED lights, but I'm just going to try to shade something to give that effect that, that is glowing from behind. I hope it works. Oh, okay, so this one, make it close storage. So it, like you want to make the bottom of the shelf look a bit more solid. All right, and then I'm going to hang like some nice pendant lights to kind of illuminate my work surface. Nice illuminated work surface. And then I'm going to add the shadows. Good lighting will create shadows, creates depth. So here I am adding the lighting. So lots of nice lighting. Yeah, so as I shade the, the space, you can see. So what's most important is to create the lifestyle. You want when your clients come in, whether end clients or even your own staff, you want to feel like what your product is to create this sense of calm, make this feel nice, and also reinforce your brand, you know, so you have all your tea stuff. And then I'll stop talking. Oh yeah, this one, you see I put track lights to really illuminate the, the artwork on the wall. Nice spotlight shining onto the tea and the leaf. <laughs> this will also help to darken the ceiling, which is quite ugly. You have all the pipes and stuff. So when you create indirect lighting, you create um focus onto the wall. I think I should stop talking at this point. Just shade, 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 shade. Very nice. You can see it's starting to get some depth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see my spotlights? Yeah, just a little bit of shading will kind of trick the eye to believe that that's a spotlight. Shadows, just a deep line creates this, the nice sharp shadow that you want. And then our ceilings disappear into the background. That awful commercial ceiling just disappears. Returning to my bookshelf, I'm creating a nice shade to give this effect of the nice LED strips illuminating and glowing from behind. So it's like shining upwards. Some nice shadows. Shadow, shadow, shadow. I was actually rushing when I was drawing this thing because I didn't want the video to be too long. It could be a bit nicer, but that's enough time. So I can see the lights kind of shining down, right? Making my ceilings go dark again. A bit more shadows. You can see this space come to life. It's almost like the sun is setting. The light is getting, the background is getting darker. The light becomes stronger and stronger. And then, yes, my floor is a little bit darker because it's wooden floors. And some shadows under the bar because the lights are hanging above it. This gives a bit of depth. So thank you for your patience. So here's how it looks like. Very similar to our drawing. It's a bit more budget, but it's nice. And here's the before, just reminders and the after again. So now you know.